In 2010, the San Diego Padres were in first place for 133 days of the season before the San Francisco Giants swooped in to win the division by just two games, a team that would of course go on to win their first World Series in San Francisco history, the first of three over five years. A big reason as to why this happened was because the Giants had a pretty active trade deadline, adding four hitters to their lineup via trades. That did not sit right with Padres starting pitcher Matt Latos. The audacity of the Giants to make trades to better their team and route to a division win and a championship? No way. Why would they do that? Here's what Leto said, specifically, quote, Baseball works in funny ways. The only way I could honestly put it is, we could be like the Giants and go and change our whole lineup, put guys with San Francisco Giants across their jerseys. We didn't, end quote. So, Again, Lados is criticizing the Giants here for making trades that helped them win, and that of course did not sit right with one of the offensive additions the Giants made, Cody Ross, telling the San Francisco Chronicle that what Leto said was asinine to say that they're a close-knit group and every team looks to improve, whether it's one, three, or five guys. So the Giants obviously looked at Lados' comments in a negative way, but they weren't the only ones, with a couple of Lados' own Padre teammates chiming in. The first one was an anonymous Padres player who told the North County Times that the comments were just not smart, with other teammate Mike Adams saying, quote, Say what you want, but if you're going to talk, you better not look like a dumbass. He's 23. He's going to have to be told every now and then to back off a little. It's more correcting him. He's still young. He's learning. Sometimes he forgets that. End quote. Matt Latos' feud with the Giants did not stop there. In February of 2011, Latos signed three baseballs for charity, but he didn't just sign his name as he also wrote I Hate SF on them. Over 60% of my watch time is from non-subscribers, so make sure to hit that button along with the bell for notifications. Not much else, if anything at all, was said about the Giants from Latos from that point forward, but it's safe to say the Giants ended up winning the battle yet again versus Latos in his team, this time in 2012 after Latos was traded to the Cincinnati Reds. Latos ended up having another great year in 2013, helping lead the Reds back to the postseason, with manager Dusty Baker planning on starting Latos for the wildcard game in Pittsburgh, something that wasn't able to happen because of a bone spur in his elbow. Johnny Cueto started instead, and the Reds lost the game. His 2014 season was limited to just 16 starts due to injuries, and during the 2014 winter meetings in December, Matt Latos, who was just one year away from becoming a free agent, was traded to Miami to join the Marlins. A couple of months later, during an interview with Fox Sports, Latos went out and made some damaging comments about the Reds, their players, and the team medical staff. He started out by mentioning how everything fell apart after the Reds lost Scott Rowland after 2012 and Bronson Arroyo after 2013, saying, quote, When Scott was there, we had guys doing exactly what they were supposed to do. After Scott left, we had guys with two years in the big leagues, in the clubhouse, on their phones, laying down in the video room, just hanging out during games, not in the dugout, not cheering their teammates on. Our dugout looked like a ghost town. Latos was most certainly not done talking. Quote, After Bronson, the same exact thing. We had starters in there roping our clubhouse attendants like cattle roping our clubbies. Guys on their computers, buying stuff, hanging out in the clubhouse. We had a guy with a year and a half in the big leagues wandering around the clubhouse hanging out. We had a closer in there sleeping until the seventh inning. We lose that veteran leadership, that's what happens. You can't have that. It turns into a circus. End quote. Reds manager Brian Price called Latos' comments a bunch of tabloid BS that's unnecessary, with general manager Walt Jockety referring to when Latos criticized the Padres after they traded him saying that we should consider the source, going on to say, quote, there might have been a couple of things that were exaggerated, more than a couple. There's no reason to go there, end quote. Latos also called out the Reds' medical staff, claiming that they rushed him along after surgery to start the season, but Latos' comments from months earlier in June of 2014 totally contradict that and show that the Reds did not rush him. On June 6th, the day Latos was told he would have to make another rehab appearance in the minor leagues before making his season debut, Latos said he was upset the Reds were holding him back, 
yet claimed he was rushed after surgery. A bunch of Reds players then proceeded to defend the medical staff after his comments, with catcher Devin Mezzarocco saying, quote unquote, for him to say that they're rushing people to get back in the game couldn't be further from the truth. Pitcher Homer Bailey added in a few words of his own, saying that if this was a court of law, the cross-examination would go after the credibility of the witness. Skip Schumacher referred to Matt Latos as an addition by subtraction and that a lot of people will be happy to see him in Miami, with pitcher Sam LaCure saying, quote unquote, we know the truth. That's the cookie cutter answer you're going to get because nobody wants to deal with this crap, man. So, onto the Marlins he went, and that stint did not last very long. Lados went on to play with three different teams in 2015. He allowed seven runs in two-thirds of an inning in his first start for the Marlins, had knee pain, missed a start after getting hit in the foot with a foul ball in the dugout, and by July 30th, a day before the trade deadline, the Marlins had had enough, trading Lados to the Dodgers in a three-team deal. He'd pitched just 24 and a third innings with the Dodgers, and he was really bad. But don't worry, it wasn't his fault. It was the manager's fault, Don Mattingly. After getting an early hook in a start where he gave up eight hits in four innings, Latos told reporters this, quote, It's hard to get into a rhythm. I kind of settled in, put up two zeros on the board, found my release point. By the time I do that, I'm already out of the game. Not being able to get deep into games, being on a quick leash, it's hard to get into a rhythm whenever you get yanked real fast, end quote. Up until that point, Latos had an ERA over six and a half with the Dodgers. So you obviously cannot blame Mattingly for wanting to pull the guy, especially after he'd already given up four runs and eight hits in just four innings. Not too long after that, the Dodgers released Latos, who would end up signing a deal with the Angels, finishing the year by throwing just three and two thirds innings with them. The White Sox decided to dish out $3 million to Latos for the 2016 season, and he actually started out really well, pitching to an ERA under one in his first four starts, but then struggled. Struggled badly, getting designated for assignment in June. He'd get picked up by the Nationals, pitch horribly in nine and two thirds innings for them, sign a minor league deal with the Blue Jays, start just three games for them in 2017, and pitch to an ERA over six and a half, eventually getting released just a little over three months after he signed. Matt Latos hasn't appeared in a major league organization since, and if you're wondering what he's been up to over the last five years, he's been playing for a bunch of independent league teams, with the most relevant thing he's been a part of being a brawl that broke out after he threw out a batter back in 2018. About a year ago, I was actually told by a player that I'm going to keep anonymous that Matt Latos was his least favorite teammate he's ever had, citing that he would always make excuses and never own up to his struggles on the mound. Add on those comments that I heard from everything else that you've heard in this video and it all adds up. As far as if Matt Latos will ever end up back in Major League Baseball, I mean, you can never say never, but at this point, he's 35 years old, hasn't pitched on a big league mound since 2017, where he sucked, so probably not. And it also doesn't help that he's not necessarily the easiest guy to be a teammate with. Maybe he's changed. Maybe he'd be an awesome teammate and friend now. But from what he showed the baseball world throughout his major league career, it's pretty clear that Matt Latos is one of, if not the worst teammates and excuse makers in baseball history. 